I was hearing in my head all of these sharp comments and I realized they were things that I wished I'd said at some time or another or wanted to say to certain people. And about the same time I didn't put it together at first, I began to see a mental image of a slender, older woman in a white winter coat, a little hat on her head, pocketbook dangling from one arm, holding the hand of a little boy, and they were walking down a sidewalk, and she had something to say. So the first book practically wrote itself because it was just a matter of getting all this out. Although Miss Julia is a little archaic herself, uh, she has the attitudes and the thoughts of, I wasn't going to admit this, somebody my age probably. <laughs> I see as a coming of age story. Even though this woman is elderly, she has her eyes opened and she sees what her first marriage was like and what she has become because of it. And she's able to open up her heart and her home to her dead husband's mistress and their small son. The little son that every time she looked at, at first, because he was the spitting image of Wesley Lord Springer, her husband, made her stomach turn. So many people ask me how old she is, and she will not tell me, and I dare not ask her. That is not a question you ask a lady. <laughs> I do a laptop on the table behind me, this one back here where I can look out in the yard and maybe get some inspiration some way or another. I don't plan out a book, but every morning to get up and get to the computer, what happens is a surprise to me as well as to the reader. I guess she just gets into my mind and off it goes. I got a lot of the ideas for the books just simply listening. Uh, I got an idea for one of the books uh, when I was on tour one time and was eating dinner by myself in a hotel dining room and there was this large table right next to me with women and I couldn't help but overhear and they were telling about this young man who had gone to New York and it had just ruined him because he left as Tony and came back as Tanya. So that went into a book. Sometimes it's hard to stop because the thoughts keep on going even though I have to go do something else or my fingers are tired. If you don't go ahead and write it right then, you lose a lot of it. I think writers are always listening and looking out for something. I am. And I will run up to a hotel room and start jotting down notes if I have to. <laughs> the latest book, Miss Julia Paints the Town, will come out in paperback in April. This is the courthouse that I based the one in uh, Miss Julia Paints the Town on. It's an old courthouse. And in the book, um, Mr. Arthur Kessler comes to town and he's gonna tear it down and build luxury condominiums. We do have a lot of out-of-state developers that come in and build gated communities and luxury condominiums, and so it came from that. I thought it would be interesting. The new hardcover comes out in April, which is Miss Julia Delivers the Goods. Sometime last year, I got an email from a reader, and she said, I'm 91 and a half years old, and before I close my eyes for the last time, something has got to be done about Hazel Marie and Mr. Pickens. And so Miss Julia Delivers the Goods is about what she does about getting something done about Hazel Marie and Mr. Pickens. If she wants to know what happens to those two before she closes her eyes, then <laughs> I better tell her. <laughs>